In this video, we are going to see automotive steering mechanism. Majorly, there are two different steering mechanism. One is Ackermann steering mechanism and Davis, Davis steering mechanism. Out of both, Ackermann steering mechanism is wide rangely used. In this video, we are going to see the explanation for correct steering angle and the Ackermann steering mechanism. First one is correct steering angle. What do you mean by correct steering angle? So, correct steering angle is a theoretical angle for a steering mechanism so whenever we are going to turn a vehicle the front wheels must turn in a definite or organized manner because to move the vehicle equally so with this that definite angle is with respect to the pivot center that is placed in a rear axle so the pivot center is also called as an instantaneous center the rear wheels which have a common and a fixed axis it is quite obvious that that center is called as a o or zero which lie somewhere in the extension so mainly it is in the extension of a center point of the rear axle or else in a center point of a differential so this is the typical diagram for calculating the correct steering angle so assume the point Q or S T or a four different wheels then what do you mean by wheelbase the wheelbase is represented either with RS or QT so wheelbase is nothing but a distance when we are viewing the vehicle from the side so which is the distance between the front and the rear wheel that is called as a wheelbase to be precise the center point of the front wheel and the center point of the rear wheel the distance between two center is called as a wheelbase then coming to the rear portion of the vehicle when we are viewing the vehicle from rear or from the front that distance which means the center point of the left tire left tire and the center point of the right tire this center is called as a distance between these two center is called as a wheel track then in this video you can see the point c the point c is nothing but a distance of the pivot centers what do you mean by pivot centers? So pivot center is nothing but a distance connected between the two track, track arm links. So further we will see. So also when a vehicle is turning, so there will be a two different angles. Here we have represented as an angle of theta and the angle phi, where angle theta is a angle of inside vehicle lock, inside wheel lock and phi is the angle of outside wheel lock here lock is nothing but uh, the maximum angle up to which the wheel can turn while steering that is called as the steering lock so according to trigonometry we can take a right angle triangle so i am taking an example a b c it's a point of a triangle the where point A to B is called adjacent side, B to C is called hypotenuse, A to C is called opposite side. So also we know that sin theta is equal is opposite side divided by hypotenuse and cos theta is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse and tan theta is nothing but adjacent divided by opposite side. So from this we are going to refer the previous correct steering angle diagram. So in this we can separate into two different right angle triangle one is from P, R and S. So this forms one right angle triangle, another one is a, the point P, Q and a T. So this forms a second right angle triangle. So I am going to write, draw separate two, two tri right angle triangle. The first I am going to take the triangle P, R and S. So we know that tan theta, tan angle, it may be of a phi or a theta. So tan phi we are going to take here tan phi is equal to adjacent side divided by opposite side here the adjacent side is the point b you can see the wheel base and the opposite side is the point p to s so we are having x and c so we can write as a x plus c or c plus x so i am going to write tan phi is equal to b divided by c plus x again for my convenience i am going to reciprocate the tan phi so I am if i am reciprocating so it will become 1 divided by tan phi is equal to c plus x divided by b 
Also, the trigonometric formula says that 1 divided by tan phi is equal to cot phi. So, cot phi is equal to c plus x divided by b. So, for my convenience, I am rewriting as cot phi is equal to c divided by b plus x divided by b since the base b is common. So, I am going to write this as a equation number 1. Next, I am going to take the second right angle triangle which is from the point P, Q and T. So, for a tan theta, so tan theta is equal to B divided by X. So, here the opposite side is will be B and adjacent side is X which means from P to T. So, it is the value is X. So, I am going to write as B divided by X. Again, for my convenience, I am going to rewrite as sorry, I am going to reciprocate as 1 divided by tan theta. So, 1 divided by tan theta is equal to x divided by b. So, also we know that 1 divided by tan theta is equal to cot theta. So, cot theta is equal to x divided by b. Also, you can see in equation number 1, we can have, we are having the term x plus b. We are having the term x plus b. So, substituting in equation number 1. 1. So, we can write as a cot phi is equal to c divided by b plus cot theta because we are having x plus b. So, instead we can rewrite as x divided by b. Okay. So, when I am bringing cot theta to the left hand side, it will become cot phi minus cot theta is equal to c divided by b. So, cot phi minus cot theta is equal to c by b. This is the equation for a correct steering angle. Then, we, we can see what does this equation defines. So, this is the fundamental equation or fundamental condition that have to satisfy all the steering mechanism. It may be of Ackermann, it may be of Davis steering mechanism. So, in this, the steering linkage have to, the steering linkage used to have to turn the vehicle in a proper angles according to the mechanisms. So, but to be the practical way, it, this equation will not satisfy in all the practical conditions. So, this is a theoretical steering angle. In next, in the continuation, we will see the Ackermann steering system. So, what do you mean by term Ackermann steering system? So, it is nothing but a simple mechanical linkage that is installed at the front axis, sorry, front axle of a vehicle to be precise that front axle in the front axle we are going to have this mechanical linkage at the back side of the front axle. Ackerman steering linkage is kept behind the front axle. So the can see in the video P, Q, M, N these are the four different uh, joints for the Ackerman steering mechanism and the end PM and Q1. It's exactly pointing out the instantaneous center at rear axle point zero. So you can see the pinkish color. This is nothing but a, this pinkish color rod, it's nothing but the track rod. And this brownish color end at both arms is called as a track arm or a cross tie or a cross link which is the link used to connect the track rod and the front axle. So when a vehicle is moving in a straight manner this there will not be any changes or any deviation in the track arm linkage. So the vehicle will move in a straight axis but when a vehicle is turning maybe of left turn or right turn. So we can see that there is a change in track arm linkages. So here the point A is the nothing but your track, sorry wheel track. So wheel track may be absorbed either from front portion of the vehicle or from rear portion of the vehicle. Then point B, it is nothing but your wheel base. So wheel base is nothing but it is a distance, center distance of front and rear wheels. So, that is viewed from side of the vehicle. Then we are having the point C that is nothing but a pivot center distance. The pivot center it is nothing but a it is a pivot center it is a center point for a both track arm linkages. And then point D 
it is nothing but length of the track rod so from point m to n this is the length of the track rod so in the layout of the above linkage the track arms are set parallel to each other and the track rod are joined together so in this the track so in this the track arms are joining the track rod so in a straight ahead position the linkage and axle beam forms a rectangular form so when you are viewing from a straight ahead position it will be like in a looking like a rectangular form so when a vehicle is turning it will be this complete arrangement will become a form of a parallelogram so when a vehicle is turning to the left or right there will be a change in the inner and the outer wheel angles so the parallel linkage position to provide 20 degrees for a inner wheel angle and 40 degrees for a outer wheel turning angle so now we can see the ackerman steering mechanism so we have completely drawn a mechanism for a straight position also for a turning angular position the black color line represents the vehicle is moving in a straight this orange color line represents the vehicle is moving in a angular motion this complete uh, linkage configuration looks like a trapezium form so in this linkage i can able to separate as a four different right angle triangle two uh, left uh, two angles two right angle triangles in a left side and two right angle triangle to the right side so let me say that one angle may be of p k m and another angle is from p m dash m and to the right side one angle is from q n l and another angle is from q n dash and n now i am going to take the angle p k m so p k m i am going to take one right angle triangle so in this i am having the r the point r is nothing but the length of the track arm and the point d represents the length of the track rod and alpha phi theta represents the angle of turning and you can see here i am going i am taking the right angle triangle p k and m so i am going to resolve the triangle and i am rewriting as a p m and k as per the angular position i am going to resolve this triangle so we know that the sine angle is equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse in this triangle the opposite side is a point y and hypotenuse is r so sin alpha here angle is alpha so sin alpha is equal to y divided by r so take this equation number 1 so next i am going to take the triangle p m dash and m so i am taking the triangle p m dash and m so the angle is lo lo uh, located at the top most point of p so i am resolving this triangle so i am going to resolve and redraw the right angle triangle so again we know that that sin angle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse here angle is phi so sin phi is equal to z divided by r similarly for a right portion of the mechanism i am going to take the triangle q n and l q n and l so again the angle is in a topmost point so i am resolving the triangle i am changing the position of the triangle so again we know that sin angle is equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse so sin alpha is equal to y divided by r this is the equation number 3 again for the last fourth triangle so we can take this triangle and again the angle is in a topmost point of a q so i am rewrite redrawing this triangle and again i am taking sin theta is equal to opposite by hypotenuse here opposite is z hypotenuse r so sin theta is equal to z divided by r so we have obtained totally four equation for four different right angle triangle so from the above triangles i am going to take two equation one is sin alpha minus phi so we know that sin alpha is equal to y by r and sin phi is equal to z divided by r when subtracting it will become y minus z divided by r so next i am going to take sin alpha plus theta so we know that sin alpha is equal to y by r plus sin theta is equal to z divided by r 
when we are adding this equation it becomes y plus z divided by r so we have totally two different equations so when you are adding equation 1 and 2 it will become as sin alpha minus phi plus sin alpha plus theta is equal to this equation so when you are adding both the equation 1 and 2 it will become y minus z plus y plus z divided by r here z and z gets cancelled it become 2y divided by r also we know that y by r is equal to sin alpha so this Ackermann steering equation means 2 sin alpha so this is the equation for Ackermann steering mechanism now we are going to see the difference between Ackermann steering and Davis steering mechanism but wide widely it is worldwidely it is used Ackermann steering mechanism than a Davis steering mechanism because Ackermann steering is on the back of the front wheels which means behind the front wheels while Davis steering mechanism is mounted in the front of the front axle and second point is Ackermann steering consists of a turning pairs while Davis steering gear consists of a sliding pairs so comparatively sliding pair turns more wear and tear but Ackermann steering which uses the turning pairs will be having the less wear and tear so at last it's an um, important point that when you are parking it is uh, very easy to turn a vehicle in a reverse position because the rear wheel turns on a smaller radius than a front wheels so comparatively while driving the vehicle in a front uh, front portion it is easy for a vehicle to turn in a rear reverse position and thank you